All right, you all set, Steve? Yep. We got everything we need? Nope. Before we get... Hi, uh, hi everyone, I'm Ryan. And I'm Steven. This is 60 Cycle Humble Guitar Buying, Selling, Money Breaking, we're reviewing, playing, smashing... Other stuff podcast. Before we get into the nitty gritty clickbaity stuff that you clicked on this video for, what? we need to talk about oh. giving away the cyclone. We're, I yeah. told Ryan to go get the scale so we could give it away. Oh my gosh. We're not. <laughs> that's such a he dad re- joke. He refused. Dude. Oh my gosh. So, anyways, we're finally giving it away. Stickers are peeling off as I'm touching it. Uh, people who have been listening to the podcast regularly know what we're doing. Well, people who listen to the end of the podcast anyways. Uh, we're doing a Christmas song competition. Send us your home-recorded Christmas songs. Maybe not home-recorded. If you've got studio-recorded Christmas songs that are your songs, you recorded them, they're your band or whatever, send them to us. We're going to do a big episode where we play them all, and then we're going to let the audience vote for the winner, and the winner gets the cyclone that we've been covering in stickers for what like nine months now it's been a while it's been a while so get on that uh i don't know what the cutoff date is we didn't decide on that Um, Steve. i was gonna say do we want to announce it one more time next week um yeah we next week should still be open so yeah so when's our next record date because that maybe that should be the cutoff our next record date is December 14th. Perfect. So I would say, like, so that's what I was saying is our next episode will air December 12th. That we can do one final reminder for that episode, which we'll be recording soon. December 14th is the last day to get us songs. And if you get them late at night, we might not include them. So get them in. You might win the Sticker Cyclone. If your song is popular with everyone who listens to the episode. How about that? (laughs) All right. Now let's talk about Trogly. (laughs) Oh, man. It's been the biggest situation. It's been all week. One week. People have been messaging. Have been people. Have people been messaging you about it? Um, No, not really. People have been messaging me about it. It's been in the six. Well, it's been in the sixty cycle hum Facebook chat, right? And it's been on the Discord a little bit, so it has come up in a couple different places. Um, But basically, I mean, do you want me to tell the story? No, let let me recap it. So Trogly took on a sponsor, which what is it? What are they called? Established titles. Established titles, and they're one of these like goofy things. Where they sell you a plot of land in Scotland. No, and no, no. They sell you a dedication to a plot okay. of land. Right. Let's not get into it. Let's, let's pitch it the way <laughs> it's been pitched on so many countless YouTube channels and podcasts. They sell you a plot of land, and because of the traditions of Scotland, now that you are a landowner, you are now an official lord or lady. You can put it on your driver's license. You can have a new birth certificate made. You are now an official lord or lady because you paid $50 for a certificate. Uh, and people who really, really care about this stuff mm-hmm. call that sort of thing out as a scam because, I mean, it's, it's incredibly misleading. Right. But it's also like, I think the back and forth is, is misleading does that make it a scam? The other side is this is a really goofy novelty gift that you do last minute instead of buying someone an, an Applebee's gift card. Yeah. You buy them a certificate that says they're a lord or a lady of some piece of land in Scotland. Yeah. Uh, so what I really want to explore, the space I want to explore is not really whether or not it's a scam because everyone's already done that to death. There's Dozens of videos on YouTube yeah, that you so can the, watch. So the guy who did the original call out right. of established titles made a second video because he's now saying that he's being targeted and people are saying that he's racist and all right, that sort right. of stuff. Uh, Trogley actually turned like he, because that guy made a video calling out established titles. Apparently some of his viewers were like, Hey Trogley, do you know about this? So then Trogley made a rebuttal video, which he later took down so, yeah, he he said it to Enlisted, and then I checked on it today. I I had the link for it, and it oh. was completely set to private. But yeah, Trotley did this big, involved video that was like 
basically going to bat for this company and explaining yeah. why they're no the guys they're fine it's fine it's not a scam it's totally guys they're on the level yeah. and it and i think he was relatively fair in it but it was also like it's it's one of these why things. are you putting so much effort into this like we've yeah. we've had sponsors in the past that turned out to be like not great sure and even uh, to the if you're listening to these episodes in reverse like you're starting with the new stuff and you're going to the old stuff when you get to the gear supply stuff right. like yeah we didn't know we didn't know you don't know like but these, okay, these okay, i want to i want to establish the direction we're going with this conversation i was trying to do it earlier and then we sidetracked I don't want to talk about the scam of it, whether it's a scam or not. I want right. to talk about whether or not it's a good idea for people in guitar media, guitar YouTubers, guitar podcasters, mm -hmm. and things mm -hmm. like that, to take on non-guitar adjacent sponsorships. Because in, in my mind, there are a wealth of companies right. that are guitar adjacent, music adjacent even, not even just guitar, just mm -hmm, music mm -hmm. adjacent that should be lining up and would love to sponsor a channel, certainly like Trogley. Yeah. Certainly like yeah. Trogley. He he should have pick of the litter of all sorts of different guitar adjacent sponsors. I understand that some content creators, their mentality is if I take sponsorships from guitar adjacent brands then it looks like these guitar adjacent brands are controlling my guitar content mm -hmm. like it's going to change my opinions and stuff like that so i understand the thinking that oh maybe it'd be better to take on a purple mattress or something right. like that and pay my bills that way because then it's not i'm not it doesn't feel like i'm misleading people into buying guitar stuff mm -hmm. but i i don't what 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 is your take on that steve um well, so one thing I'll say that he says in his, well, a couple, a few different things. One thing that he says in his video that like, I don't know, I don't know what raid shadow legends is paying people, right? Like we could have found out a few times. We, we could have, right? <laughs> well, no, a number of those were Czechoslovakian scams. Oh, they, you know, every time you see the dot CZ on an email, yeah. it's like, no, I'm not, I'm, um, I'm not even curious. But from what? Was what Trogley said about established titles is it sounds like they are paying people very well. Sure. Now, what does that mean? I don't know. Our rates are on 60cyclehum.com. You can check them out if you want to know. <laughs> everyone pays uh, the same rates, you know. But uh, Your fenders and your small brands and everyone in between pays the same rate yeah, on 60 but we, Cycle But hum. we don't know. Like, And I, get, I suppose like if a guitar company, if a, if a, if a brand that we wanted to work with, regardless of what they were. Let's just say any advertiser sure. came to us and said, hey, uh, I don't know what your rates are, but this is what I'd like to offer. I'm not going to be like, well, actually, you're coming in like four times higher than our... No, no. You know, I'm going to be like, yes, okay. yes, sir, may I have another? So, so that is that is part of the equation with some of these like established titles, some of these bigger companies that do this is they're kind of making money like possibly making money hand over fist they well, might yeah, have a lot of money to spend on marketing and so they're selling pieces of paper for fifty dollars yeah well they're also planting a tree well they're not planting a tree right but they're that, donating money to right. another company who plants a tree and it costs them a, a you know like a couple bucks to plant a tree because i don't know you know the uh i don't know what tree seeds cost these days and the comment section to the rebuttal video that trogley has already removed from the internet uh, because the comments were an absolute flame war. Mm -hmm. he, like I, it was th like a thousand comments of people just calling him out and dragging okay. him. There was a couple people who kept insisting that this established titles company pays creators $20,000. I have no idea where that m number came from. If it's accurate at all. All if right. it's like if say like you're Mr. Beasts of the world that they were like oh yeah this company paid me twenty grand now everyone assumes oh they pay everyone the same rate that's not usually how these things work you know not everyone gets the same rate mm -hmm. you know they you know the advertising agencies are involved and they look at channels and they figure out what their yeah. reach will be and things yeah. like that a lot of times for this sort of stuff for the non guitar adjacent sponsors it's all based on uh, 
clicks. Yeah. It's all based Click on through affiliate linking. It's based on sales. It's com- yeah. it's a commission thing. Like we did Manscaped yeah. for one episode because I said to them, we're not going to do it based on commissions. You have to pay yeah. our yeah. sponsor rate. And they're like, let's try it for one time. And then maybe you'll see that you want to we do one kit away. From, from getting that right it still wouldn't have been worth it like, I think there's I think there's some of these uh so one first of all going back a couple of weeks this is a callback yeah I think ultimately if you were to say hey Trogley, what the hell like what's up with this you know what his response would be he'd say Ryan uh-huh this is my job yeah oh totally no so, you I, know I have like my my internal dialogue of should content creators in the guitar world be doing non-guitar sponsorships or not. It's totally like my dialogue. I don't, right. I don't, I can't speak for anyone else's finances. I can't speak for anyone else's decisions, but clearly like this sort of thing, like raises eyebrows. Yeah. And I mean, that's we're doing of- really well. We've, we're, we were filming half of a garage. <laughs> we can afford half of a garage. There's already people that don't trust guitar YouTubers, yeah, YouTubers yeah. in general. Uh, does this help or does it hurt? You know, uh, but what, I, what I was going to ask going down the, the, the line of thought of the $20,000 thing. Mm-hmm. If we got the email and it wasn't a dot CZ, right. it wasn't clearly a scam. And that company hit us up and we did a little back and forth with them. And then they threw that number at us. Do you think we would say yes or no? I think 20 grand. I think it would be heavily. Re- I Jeez, know it man. would be. I know it would be a yes. Are you kidding me, Steve? All right. I would. You're, ha- saying, you're saying so because because that's been the big thing. And he, right and now, if they back, if they wrote tonight, if, if a sta- we got an email from established titles tonight and we're I'm only bringing them up because they're like in the in the n- news cycle. Sure, 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 sure. And said like, hey, this is what we pay. <laughs> Don't worry about it. This is what well, almost <laughs> took my over. light out. <laughs> or took my almost took my water out. And then they said, this is what we pay. Like, would you just be like, well, I've been saying that I only want to work with the guitar companies for the last five episodes, but uh, I guess I'm getting out of that game. No, I would take the money and you would get an extremely honest sponsorship out of us. I think that would be like the big no, thing we, for me is like. we Knowing what is, we know now, if, if it happened tonight, if it happened this week, we would be like, hey, here's all the information. This is a gag gift. This is a fun, silly thing to do. You get a certificate, yeah. blah, blah, blah. You show it off at parties, whatever. You don't get to visit that land. You don't get to build on that land. It's not actually your land, you know, like, yeah. but it's a fun gag gift. Like we would do that sponsorship and I would take that money and we would split it 50-50, Steve. Yes. You know what, you know what a difference in my life? Half of twenty grand would make. Do you know how much that is, Ryan? You got. You need some extra fingers, there, buddy. I wanted to say twenty grand again. Um, <laughs> now, I, I, I. You're right. We would just. Take we would it. take. No, the, I don't. But I don't. Wouldn't believe you for a minute if you said we wouldn't take there, it. There, there is the. So the guy who made the original expose video made a second video. I think I talked about it a little bit earlier. Or basically, like it sounds like they're attacking him, and he thinks he's going to get sued by established titles, because they went through and they said, "No, our website has always said this." And then he went on the Wayback Machine like right. three months. And was I watched like, the same video. Okay, I didn't yeah. know if you watched it. I did. But well, tell the tell the viewers. So anyway, in the video, he's like he jumps in the Wayback Machine, which is this internet archive site. And he goes back and he's like, "None of this. Like, here's where they edited this paragraph, yeah. and here's where they edited this paragraph." They made adjustments because the pushback is significant right yeah. now. Like the, that guy's first video. Like if you search on YouTube uh, for this company, not even searching for scam videos, mm-hmm. the first couple dozen videos are all people calling it a scam. Yeah. Like if Trogley had just searched YouTube before taking the sponsorship, he would have seen like, oh, a lot of people are saying this is a scam. That's yeah. what he would have seen on YouTube. But you search for this guy's video and he, I think he had like two and a half million views on it. Which is significantly more than all the other yeah. videos. Like it, this, this oh, is it took, it took off. This sure. is a video that took off and is affecting their bottom line, and they are making adjustments around it. I think, I think uh, when I think about non-guitar brands, I want to work with again, like the one that you see on YouTube a lot is 
Raid Shadow Legends. Didn't Glenn do Raid Shadow Legends? I think Legends so. He did one video game thing, and oh um, man, it's just, and, and the problem I have with that is it they makes want, me cringe. When they want to do all the drop it and the overlay and stuff. Um, and well, yeah, here's and, the thing that like those those sponsors they want you to read a script and not deviate. Yeah. Steve and I don't know how to how to read. Uh, so, <laughs> well, and the thing but is, it's like that's what don't, that's don't what, know how to read. No, I'm just gonna say we don't know how to read a script, which that's, is true. That's why if you watch. You know, Glenn do his Shadow Legends ad. If it was Shadow Legends, it might have been something similar. Yeah. And then you watch another channel do their Shadow Legends ad. The read is exactly the same. It's not their words. And they're just saying, my audience is smart enough to know that this is a standard commercial. Yeah. I got a payday. They didn't see me. The, you know, it doesn't look like I'm shilling some guitar brand for money doing the same sort of thing, but different for them. So who cares? It's just a mobile video game. I think right. that's the mentality. And, and I mean, I, I guess it works for that brand. I just would want to do it for a game that I actually play. Right. So the problem with that is it would only oh, work for. Uh, you think Roller Coaster Tycoon? Yeah, right. Uh, I was going to say it, it would. For me, it would only work for uh, Marvel Strike Force, which is a mobile game, and Crosswords. Crosswords, yeah. You think you think there's a uh, uh, influencer money out there for Solitaire? <laughs> <laughs> you got to check out the hot new game. The, all, the the cards jump off the screen when you win. Yeah, yeah. I mean, there is like the the gambling Solitaire, right? Like, I bet there's those are those are full on, very difficult to win money. Yeah, yeah. Scams. Uh, I, look, well, here's there's got to be. We would take the twenty grand for established titles. Sure. We would just. We just would. And we'd hope that everyone in the audience would root for us yeah. when we did it. Like, yeah, boys, get that money. Spend that money on your families. Pay some pay some mortgage bills and things like that. Do you think that they require, when you do that, they require editing? Like, would they uh, want it to be a, an inserted ad? They might require some sort of... Um, no, they might requ require, for that amount of money... They might require some sort of oversight on it. Like, That's what I'm we, saying, like we don't we don't charge enough to for anyone to be able to demand oversight. So what I'm saying is, is well, what would be but for twenty grand, I feel would, like okay, we'll let you see it. You what would know? be horrible for anything like that is like if they wanted insertion. So what we do is like, and here's an ad spot, and then we just went to the corners and like glared at the just ad, like, like looked at it. Oh, you're talking? They sent their own media for us to insert. What I'm saying, like even the one that, like, or we made a pre-made thing. That I'm was, saying, like okay. even the one that Trogley did, it's a pre-made thing with right, like, right. pictures and stuff, and and a few of the other channels I watch that have uh, established titles ones um, is pre-produced. That it's, probably it's means like a pre-produced. It looks like an yeah. insertion. That probably means that it needs to be approved first. Yeah, that's what's going on there. Which is another layer to, you know, the scam arguments about this is that if established titles does require approval of ad reads and, and we're just speculating there we and this is we full speculation that. if they do require approval before publishing of ad reads then they've seen all of the ad reads from these creators and they have seen the ones that clearly didn't fully understand the concept yeah. and clearly were pushing it as something that it is not. And they still approved those ad reads and said, yeah, say that you own the land, say that you can officially yeah. be a Lord or lady, say that, say all this stuff, you know, say that they're planting the trees personally and say that it is to protect the land that they own in Scotland. Like apparently the, the land that they own in Scotland is already, under a protected status, so yeah. they wouldn't be able to do anything with it anyways. Yeah, so it's so like, you're not saving a piece of land from development in Scotland. It's already saved. By you're, you're, you're planting a tree, like, in, in the wilderness of some other place. Right, right. It could, Which you know, is still cool. It like, is it's still st cool. It's still cool. But you could, like, like, the guy who made the rebuttal video pointed out, you could just go straight to the, to the organization that's planting the trees and plant a lot more trees and then give that receipt to your sure. friends and family but, but to, no, as a gag But no gift. one ever does that. No. Right? They no. want the gag. They want the lord and the lady. Oh, man, the tree company should just be like, hey, these trees that we bought under tree law, you are now a lord and a lady. No, Like, you, they could run that scam themselves. They don't. Cut out the middleman. They should do it. Cut they out should the do it like Lord of the Rings and be like, if you plant a tree, you are, you are a, an official ent mm. by, by Tolkien law. 
That's a, they should do it. Then they could get they could get all that money, and then they could get sued by J, the J.R. Tolkien estate. <laughs> no, just, gotta just change the words a little bit. Yeah, yeah. Um, be, a, be a tree lord. Plant d- donate to plant tree, trees. Tree be lord. a tree lady. Uh, what are what are some of the so I, so I th- I really like the idea of like brand adjacent things. I think there are some big ones. I mean, you know, we kind of will hit on them in a few minutes again. Sure, we have uh, sponsors like Vibes earplugs. Oh, it, this is like an adjacent, like music adjacent. Music would, adjacent. This isn't guitar specific. This is for all kinds of music things. One that I think is a really good one. And that, if you pay attention to the way that we present these things, we say that everyone should use hearing protection. Whether you use vibes or not, everyone should use hearing yeah. protection. Like, you know, we're, these are Ryan, pretty soft We're going to say it all here. again in 10 minutes. It's yeah, fine. these are soft um, pitches here. But what, what I was going to say is um, another one that is a not guitar, but it's music related is like DistroKid. Sure. A lot of a lot of guitar podcasts are do, do DistroKid programs, yeah. you know. And, then, you um, know, like you can figure out if that's a good service for you or not. You know, it, it is a service. It provides you a service. That is, you know, somewhat tangible. I know it's all online, but you know, you know what I mean. Yeah, and let's get it's distribution. It's they're doing kind of what CD Baby does, right. but like better. I think. I mean, honestly, my experience with CD it. Baby, I don't know much about DistroKid, but it, if they hit us up, I might take a hard look and be like, oh man, maybe I should just switch my stuff over. Hey. <laughs> Could be worth it. CD babies. I guess it's all right. I don't know any alternative though. You know, but there there are all kinds of sponsorships that a channel like Trogly and so many of these others that take on these non guitar, non music adjacent sponsors could take on without like you, like Trogly couldn't take on like a Gibson sponsorship, sure, because that would color, like that would have an appearance, even if it didn't color his opinions. It would have an appearance mm-hmm. of coloring his opinions. But he could do pedal. He could do pedal. He could do pedal. He, he could do, do stores. He could do strings. Of I mean, we've had String Joy mm-hmm. right now as a sponsor. We've had Diderio. We've had Gear Supply <laughs> Company. Supply company. <laughs> <laughs> we've had uh, you know like strings, picks. Yeah, there's all lots sorts of, of there's lots of stuff accessories, of pedal boards, Adam, cables, Adam and Eve. Adam and Eve, sex yeah. toys. Co- yeah. Cox Cable. Cox Cable. <laughs> Spectrum, you know. AT- AT&T U-verse. <laughs> no, but they're, they're retailers. Trogly yeah. should be in bed with a retailer. Not so much to cover the things that he... Well, the I don't that, know the, what his significant other does thing. for a living. Here's the thing. He is a retailer, so that wouldn't work. That's his whole thing is resale. Is he a re- is he a re- yeah, that's what he does is he gets guitars and then he documents them and then he flips them. That's his whole thing. That's so like he, a different kind of resale. I uh, that might maybe re- when, retailers maybe in you're... the retailers in the audience is strongly problematic to sponsor as a retailer. I think he might be now that I now that I actually think about it. I don't, I, I really don't know. Yeah, really don't know. Um, but also, like, I'm under the impression he's making good money. <laughs> like, but it if it is twenty thousand dollars. Oh yeah. If it here's my thing, Trogly, if you're watching right now. If it is twenty thousand dollars, if it's half of that, even a quarter of that, <laughs> I get it, dude. T- if it's a tenth of that, I get it. Get your money. Get it. But here's where I think you went went wrong. This is creator to creator right here. YouTuber to YouTuber. Don't go out of your way to defend the sponsors if the audience finds something wrong with them. Go sit back and go, hmm, that's interesting. My audience doesn't seem to like this sponsor. Maybe I should look into that. We've had to do that a couple times. It's part of the business. I know. Yes, this this episode is brought to you by Vertex Effects. Oh my gosh. <laughs> if, if the money is really, really, really that good, I guess I get it, but I think you positioned your rebuttal all wrong, and I think there's a learning experience here, and uh, and I and I hope you come away with some knowledge that you didn't have before. Also, I think you should relist your video, lock comments, but I think you should relist it. So, like, here's the thing: it's going to do more damage to you people talking about it without them being able to see it. Mm-hmm. That's the Barbara Streisand effect right there. If people can see it, 
then they can take your side more often. If they can't see it, then they're going to take the word of people who are against you. This is the closing of my heart to heart with Trotley right now. Creator to creator, I hope that you listened with an open heart and know that I'm coming from a place of kindness and professional courtesy. All right, one last thing. Yes. Music, guitar-related sponsorship. What do you think would be like a really interesting sponsorship that we haven't really seen? I guess it would only work. Okay. It's hard because I, I said this in our video like two weeks ago. There's really only three things. <laughs> there's guitars, there's pedals, and there's amps. And I guess four things because there's accessories. Yeah. Five things, roughly music adjacent products. Your so earplugs, your headphones, your things like that. The thing speakers. that I think would be really cool to promote, except you could really only do it with dynamic insertion, is music tour, like band tours. Concerts? Yeah, like a band hits you up and says, hey, we're doing a West Coast tour. Can you, or we're doing a, we're doing a U.S. tour. Can you run uh, like an ad spot for two months leading up to when we kick off this tour? No, that problem great. is, well, the problem is, is because of the way we do uh, ads, it, it's, uh, it doesn't really like, it doesn't really work. No, like it album. doesn't work as well as like an, as, as well as a dynamic insertion. Work. Album promotion? Album promotion. Wh what's work. left of the, of the music industry out there? You want to promote an album on a podcast on a channel that will get you music listeners, passionate music listeners, yeah. the guitar niche, the instrument niche, niche, however you want to pronounce it, Mark. Uh, <laughs> I think it's pronounced niche. Niche. The, the, niche. Getting into the music instrument, niche, on YouTube, on podcasts and, or whatnot, would get you an audience that is fiercely loyal mm -hmm. and is going to go to shows, enjoys shows, is going to go to shows to go to the front row to look at all the pedals and stuff like that. Yeah. That's smart marketing, and that is the exact type of marketing that, you know, someone like Trogley could do. Mm -hmm. If those, if the ad companies out there had the brains to do it, you know, that, that sort of thing has to be offered. And that's part of the problem is that we can only take the sponsorships that are offered to us. That's you know? true. So there's that angle to it too. But anyways, yeah, I dig twenty thousand so, dollars. Yeah. Roller coaster tycoon, <laughs> if you're out there, this is your guy. <laughs> Famously, a uh, a title without a home. <laughs> well, it's like the version that I play is like twenty something years old, and right. it's not, like you, you you just get it for free on the internet. Yep. You know, you just download it. Like it's not something you promote anymore. There's newer versions you can go buy. Go buy. I bought the version for the Switch, which is hard to play on the Switch, mm. but you can go buy that one. <laughs> I I bought uh just going off that over for the uh I guess Cyber Week whatever. Uh I bought the entire Half-Life collection. Oh, did you? Half-Life 1, all the expansions for Half-Life, Half-Life 2 all the extensions for Half-Life because it's one, it's old and two, it was on sale. Like literally like Half-Life one was like 80 cents. Whoa. And so the entire thing together was like under 10 bucks. We could be thanks. Spon thanks steam. We could be sponsored by Half-Life. We could be sponsored by steam. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Should we do video game ads guys? You We're not going to do them because I don't want to get scammed. I don't want our, our entire thing to get hacked because that's how you get hacked. Other creators, that's how you get hacked. Don't do it. Well, if, again, if you're working, we talked about this. Maybe you and plug I just started Don't take plug-in sponsors. Don't take random plug-ins. Oh, my plug God. Don't take plug-in sponsorships. Don't take anything that requires you to download. No, don't click the links. Don't download anything. That's how you get hacked. Yeah, just look at my, uh, what's the what's the sketchy uh, website that like people use? Mega, uh, Mega Biz or something? Yeah, something like that. I don't know. It's like as big people just upload zip files of random garbage on there. I feel sketchy when I'm downloading a font from defont.com. <laughs> I'm like, what's this going to have in it? Oh, um, <laughs> are you familiar with uh, the font Source Sans Pro? I'm not sure. Okay, we'll talk, if I saw it, I probably we'll would be able to tell you things about it. it. It's When it's all caps and bold, it's really ugly. Okay, I believe you. <laughs> And speaking of real, no, I'm just kidding. Okay, okay, let's let's do some stuff. Let's yeah, move let's do on. Some housekeeping. Yeah, we're done with that topic. I'm sure the comment section is just 
chock full of people discussing the scam element of it and going to bat for Trogli or going to bat against him. Whatever you want to talk about in the comment section is fine with me. We're not going to, unless the video, we're not going to make it private. <laughs> uh, this is housekeeping is a time where we talk about uh, our Patreon, yes. patreon.com slash 60 cycle homecast. When there's enough people, when there's, uh, when, I was going to say, when there are enough people supporting us through Patreon, we will, we will, we can stop running ads. Enough is like the entire, uh, we won't say what that number is. But we when, would, there, when okay. there's enough, we would have to have three or four times more patrons than we have. Like right I said, now. when there's enough. When there's enough. <laughs> we're not saying what enough is. Dude, last podcast on the left hat pulls like $20,000 a month on Patreon. But they also have like a team of researchers. and Right. They're a legit operation. You know what goes on here. We don't yeah. deserve that. <laughs> um, so uh, apparently I missed this one. If, I have, if you're on the Patreon... Uh, Ryan and I have been talking about ways to be more active in there. So we are trying. We're making an effort. I'm starting to upload uh, pre-production photos, like little teasers and stuff yeah. like that. Like I, I teased the cattle and bread uh, contest mm. uh, last week, and I teased the spring reverb thing on there. I'm going to try to keep up on that. I downloaded the app so that I can really quickly interact with the yeah. Patreon. Just shoot us a message on there. If you have trouble getting into the inner circle, if you join in the inner circle, shoot us a message. I'll walk you through it. I try to check it at least once a week. Um the the actual app to sure, see sure. if there's any new messages um but one person who did reach out and say hey you missed me is js who joined us at the ten dollar level welcome js um some other folks uh at the five dollar level uh lucas Servi, uh jacob mcdougald and vander guitars jacob mcdougald M jacob mcdougald I wonder if he's related to uh mcdougall of our very early podcast episodes fame who would I call thought him. that was just dougal I thought it was McDougal. Oh, I don't know. It might have been Dougal. You're right. Okay. Uh, and at the $1 level, Pranoy Pinto. And if every single person who watches this episode joins our Patreon at the $1 level, then we, that might be enough to, for us to stop running ads. It would. You know what? It might be close. It depends on how many views this video gets. I mean, normal <laughs> is two or 3,000. <laughs> Oh, I was thinking more. And this one's the, got that trolley clickbait. I was bait, thinking so. more in the six to eight thousand range. <laughs> that um, would be that would be very nice. I would like where, that very much. I'm doing my Jimmy is, Click voice. Where is? Uh, let's do let's do an ad. No, let's do a sponsor spot. Okay. Oh, I just want to get it done. I'm talking so much about money. I know. Sorry. Let's make some of it, Steve. Uh, string joy. String joy. They Co got coated strings now. They do. They go get go get some coated strings. Uh, just check them out. The link below. String Joy strings are made in Nashville. Our friend Blake. Blake Wyland from the Tone Mob. I Did you not say, remember his name? I've been so I'm so Our tired friend right now. Blake Wyland of the Tone Mob podcast is a is a he part, does their marketing he, work. He does for them marketing stuff. work and yeah. some other stuff over yeah. there. Yeah, but anyways, you can get custom sets, all kinds of wild, crazy combinations. Make any string, any gauge that you want. Put them all together to get a set that no one else has. It's your special set of strings custom for you. Isn't the future incredible? Yep. We live in the future, guys. There's robots. There's drones. You can get a pack of strings made specifically for your personal preference and needs. It's it's incredible. You had such a great like ender right there when you said, isn't the future incredible? And then you just rambled for another 15 seconds. Welcome to podcast, Steve. Uh, this episode is also brought to you by Vibes. Vibes High Fidelity Earplugs. They're going to help you. If, you, you are, if you've like ever used foam earplugs, you bought a bunch of them because you went to Big Five. They're, yeah. leftover from your, earplugs. they're leftover from your trip to the shooting range or whatever. Right. And you're like, I'll use this at a concert. And then you go there and everything. <laughs> this is what foam earplugs sound like. This is like what, if you heard someone talking and you had a uh, phone earplugs in, it's like, yeah. You, if you have vibes in and you listen to someone talking, it's more like, oh, it's just kind of quieter and it's easier on your ears, but you can still hear the full frequencies. You know, that's a creative use. I of wasn't the sure what you were about to do, and then you did it, and I was like, oh my god, that's that's it's brilliant, right? Brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> uh, these have a have a 15 decibel noise reduction rating. The way high fidelity earplugs work is instead of doing like a single, pretty much single flat cut across the board of everything, it's a little more contoured. So it's going to cut free. It's going to cut decibels in ways that make sense to the contours. It means you can enjoy music. Response. 
It means you yeah. can go to a concert and you can enjoy the music because you can hear the bass, the drums, the hi-hat. You can hear the highs of the squealing feedback and guitar. You can hear it all. It's just quieter. I've been using these at concerts before we had the sponsorship again. I've just been using them and I've been using them while I'm using the jackhammer in the backyard. Mm -hmm. I've been resupporting a, a retaining wall that I have and having to dig deep holes with a jack hole, with a jackhammer. And I can hear every intricate little frequency of that jackhammer. <laughs> You're dumb. So anyways, protect your ears. If it's not with Vibes, do it with something. There's all kinds of products on the market these days, but Vibes is the one sponsoring us right yep. now. So go use the link Vibes, down below. Vibes is offering, I believe it's 15% uh, off. So when you use that link below and then use the code 60 cycle, uh, you're going to get a little bit of a discount and look, it's a little box. It's a, oh, I don't know why I picked up yours. It's a little box. It's a perfect stocking stuffer. Perfect stocking stuffer. You buy this now and you got to Do you have someone in your life Christmas. that plays music or goes to music? Ryan, like, I, I, could, I finished the ad. You can stop talking. I could buy this for my sister who doesn't play uh, anything, but goes to concerts. You know? Yeah. She's going to need it for that, her trip to Taylor Swift. Yeah. She wants to hear all of Taylor you, Swift's high highs and lows lows. Okay, sponsorship is ended. Steve, do you feel because we spent the first half of this show talking about another channel's sponsorships that now we're coming in with a uh, hotter level of professionalism than we usually do with our own sponsorships? No, I felt like those sponsor spots were extremely unprofessional. I well, forgot. Will still I work. forgot Blake's name. They're always going to be. This you is the just rambled on and on and on. It is the sixty cycle hum promise and guarantee that everything we do will be unprofessional. So there's that. All right, this was. But for I sale. felt like we took it to another level. This was for sale in uh, Folkestone, United Kingdom. This sold for four hundred and thirteen pounds. Um, oh my gosh. 1952 original Jasper Jane sent this to us. Oh, thanks. Yeah. Uh, 1952 original Gibson Les Paul headstock. Crazy, but true. The true vintage guitar nuts. Uh, sorry. Ah, my pen died. Uh, true vintage guitar nuts. One and only chance to own a slice of history without the usual financial pain. As you can see from the pictures, this headstock has parted company with the rest of the instrument. But a future existence as a desk ornament, paperweight talking point is only just around the corner held back by your imagination for a few extra quid. Uh, it can also supply the very period oxidized Grover tuners that were fitted before one bad slip reduced the guitar's value very considerably. The guitar is long gone, probably the strangest and most unusual thing I'll ever part with guitar wise. Still, I'm still having the therapy. 413 pounds. That's how much it weighs. Now, that's how much someone paid for it. Plus 17 pound postage. Someone paid 430 pounds. What is that US? Right now, I want to say it's like uh, just south of 500. We have to convert it to kilograms first. Oh, uh, 413 <laughs> pounds is um, about... Uh, 180 kilograms. And how many thing. dollars is that? Uh, 180 kilograms is let's this is see, a dumb bit. 0. 0.63 dollars per kilogram. <laughs> um, so that's like around uh, 110. It's your guys' fault for tuning in and watching. <laughs> you you encourage us. <laughs> It's by continuing to, to view and listen to this nonsense. I'm looking at this headstock repair and it just looks like they're trying to make turn this uh this uh Gibson into an airbender. Next time next time someone asks like, hey, does it devalue my Gibson if it's had a headstock break that's been repaired? Just the headstock. Just the headstock, which had had a repair to it. This headstock had a, had a headstock break, was repaired, and then became just a headstock by itself and still sold for 430 pounds. 13. Let's call it, oh, 400, you're saying let's call it 450 U.S. I have you're no idea what postage. it would actually be. Post with postage. Yeah. Someone paid $450 U.S. Guaranteed exchange rate accuracy. <laughs> no matter what year you're listening to this. Uh for a headstock that was double broken <laughs> and wasn't fixed the second time. Like, it is wild to me that there is a market for this. Like, I feel like the top end of this should be $150 
as, I, a, as I just, a curiosity. I just don't know. Like he's right. Like it's a and future, even that's wild. It's future existence as a excuse me desk ornament, paperweight, whatever. But it's like I can't imagine having a just a non functional. I, as I say this out loud, I'm trying to think if I, if I if I do have this like a non functional 413. It's never going to be functional know, again. No one no item. It's just sitting on your desk. It doesn't do anything. You know, I guess a a very talented luthier, a very talented tech could take out this repair mm-hmm. and make a heel that would allow this to be mounted to an existing guitar. Right. I think they could do the work cleanly enough to make that happen. And they would be like, hey, I have this guitar that's mostly new, but the headstock is a 1952 Les Paul headstock. And that is a selling point somehow. Throw throw it on to like a, a Squire M70. Do you know who probably bought this? Trogley. <laughs> what? That's what you were going to say, no, right? No, it was not. Oh. Gibson bought this. Oh, that would make sense. They got See, in that a, would make sense. They got in a bidding war. Gibson bought this. They're going to reverse engineer it in the Murphy Lab. And they're going to sell Murphy Lab aged headstocks. Just the headstocks. Just cut off. You can just buy a headstock. It's not going to cost you $450 <laughs> like this one did. It's going to it's probably going to cost you like 3 grand. <laughs> No, but it is. But it's it's certified authentic from the Murphy Lab, Steve. Do you know what science they do over there? Mad science to recreate, like to perfectly recreate aging. Like they are gonna, they bought this and they are going to study it and they are going to learn how to recreate every crack and chip in that beautiful black aged finish. How to make the Les Paul script just disappear under that clacking cracking clear coat how to get just that perfect amount of wear on the edges of the book scroll on the top and how to reproduce the original break mend it perfectly recreate that mending, i'm looking at this picture and Ryan, cut it off look again. at this picture there's no serial number i think this is a counterfeit <laughs> you know what serial numbers weren't invented in 1952 <laughs> that might actually be true i have no idea Trogley, you're in the comments right now. Tell everyone, is that true? (laughs) Oh my gosh. Give us, Trogley, you're here. Give us a few comments on this Gibson headstock. You know you stuck around for it. Come on, you know you stuck around for it. I I don't think he watches this show. No, he didn't before. He does now. Okay. We're talking about him. Of course he's going to watch the show. That's true. Oh, and he's going to be like, man, these guys suck. I know. What a bunch of dicks. <laughs> All right, Ryan, I got a question for you. Okay, ask me, Steve. What's new? You know what? I had, uh, I, I've been talking for a while that Dinosaur Ghost was going to get back together. We had our first practice. I saw that. Uh, a week or so ago. And I think it went really well. Uh, it was our first jam with a new drummer. Um, hopefully he likes us and sticks around cause he did a good job. You know, like he was playing the songs with us for the first time mm-hmm. and you know, like he was on it technically. I'm waiting to see, uh, the energy come in, you know, the excitement come in cause right. it's different when you're like, okay, I got to stay on top of this. I want to, I want to see what happens when he cuts loose a little bit, but I'm excited. I'm excited to be playing what with the boys he, again. What if he can't cut loose? Like, do you know that he has that gear? I know that he's good enough that if he's not one who cuts loose, he's going to be one who holds it down tight. Okay. That's my that's my initial impression is this guy can hold it down tight. Mm-hmm. And he's he's got skills. I think he's got skills. Uh, but we went and practiced at the, at the bassist's house. He has a mm-hmm. house with a music room. He's in like two country bands apparently. So he has this <laughs> whole like <laughs> practice thing going on at his house. Oh, he's like, hey, this is great. I want to do this all the time now. So hopefully I get a bunch more practices in. Hopefully we have some shows in 2023. Uh, I'm also really hoping to do some like tiny desk style concerts here mm-hmm. with the band in the room and like set up a drum kit. Uh, like on acoustic? No, no, like do the full thing, but like get some recordings of Dinosaur right, Ghost no, playing here and, you know, show it on the channel and stuff like that. And so send it, you can send it to a uh, tiny desk and, and, then send it, and yeah. they do like a local band concert and they, they take a few uh, unheard, unsigned types. Hey, yeah, and, maybe they'd have us. And then you can p- pay to fly to New York because they're not going to pay. You don't think so? I don't. I doubt it. 
You think, You're probably you right. Think they pay? I mean, I don't know. I could be wrong. If Tiny Desk Concerts invited us out, mm-hmm. if Dinosaur Ghost got good enough to be invited out, mm-hmm. I'm not going to assume that we are good enough, uh, and it cost us the money to do it, I we would fu- we would find a way to fund it. Yeah. We would do it. Of course we would do it. We no ta- doubt. We would no take doubt. on that $20,000 sponsorship. It'd be easy. Oh, okay. <laughs> I bet no. I bet we could get Sweetwater to sponsor it. <laughs> Am I wrong? Yeah. Sweetwater, email me and you can tell me I'm wrong. <laughs> if you don't email us, we know. No, we probably could. Be, that you, know, you dinosaur, are that you agree. I probably could get various gear companies to sponsor a trip sure. to New York to be on Tiny Desk concerts, and it'd be like wearing a pedal around my neck. I'm like, I'm using this pedal. Oh my gosh. <laughs> this um. is the this is the episode. Where everything is about how much we've sold out and how everyone else has uh, sold out. It's just all sponsorship. Remember it's all when we money, used guys. to do this show for the love of podcasting? <laughs> yeah, when we did it for the goal of eventually making money doing podcasting. <laughs> That's true. Because we love podcasting and it's totally healthy and natural and smart and good, honestly, to try to make money doing things that you love. We've got a box in. We've got a box in. That's because we have a mailing address. Yep. And you guys could send us stuff. This was sent to us by listener, friend of the show, Spaghetti Butler. That's right. I don't think it's the Spaghetti Butler, but he, he's who the also, Spaghetti Butler. Also goes by Spaghetti Butler. He what emailed us about it, warning us that it was coming. Not warning, but you know, telling us, informing us. I still have no idea what it is. Well, Ryan, I believe it's a pedal. Well, yeah, I know it's a pedal. It said on the bag where it's from, but I don't. I like the surprise. I like the mystery. Okay, now we'll show. This is a from VV Co. Pedals. This was sent to us by Spaghetti Butler. Which one? Oh, here's some. Uh, here's a thing. I don't know what these things are. Yes, this is what I thought it was. Steve knows what it is. I and... hope it. I mean, I don't know. Why they sent us a sticker? This is keys. What are these keys for? What do we got here, Steve? Blast from the past. Time box. Pedals? <laughs> oh, that's a different one. It looks like a bucket. VVCO Pedals Almanac. Complete effects statistics, 1950 to 2000. That's... So have you seen this one? The Dark Father? Which is no, also, I haven't. This is also a pedal they make. Oh, look, you were going to open up and it's a safe. Oh, that's what these key, that's what the key is for. That's a really clever rehousing. That's a way of doing a Back to the Future pedal that's not another DeLorean or not another... Oh, uh, 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 what is it called? The, can- the Continuum Transfunctioner. Oh, that opens up the whole freaking thing. Yeah, I figured it would. That's cool. What is the thing called? The circuit. The f- flux capacitor? The flux capacitor. How come that, could, I, that was not in my brain I for some know. reason? I said it earlier tonight. What kind of pedal is Cause this? Because you were talking about this might be a Back to the Future thing. I don't know. I'm the, two knobs. Uh, I'm betting fuzz. The uh, uh, the official VV Co pedals almanac is here, with all your effects pedal statistics in one place. Do not get caught with it without it, no matter the time or place. Does not say what it is. Maybe it's something super weird. This is a really interesting case for a pedal. Here's a question I have: If you Velcro this to your board. Isn't this a problem? <laughs> how, how are you supposed to attach it to your board? It's, it's Can gonna... we put this sticker on the guitar? Yeah, go for it. I mean, this is our pedal, Steve. We need to do uh, shared custody of it. Yeah. Oh, wait, did it? Did we find it, figure out what it is? No. I have no idea. Well. We're going to have to look it up. We'll find out eventually. <laughs> All right. Here's the cyclone, Steve. Throw the sticker on there. One more, maybe two more before, who knows? Maybe everyone will send a bunch of stickers next week and we'll put a dozen more stickers on here. Okay, put it on there, man. Where's the spot for it? I'm really proud that we actually covered the vast majority of this. Here, uh, right up here, Steve, right there, right by the strap button. I can get it off. Here? Yeah. There we go. One more sticker. The lucky winner is going to have to take off with Guga. <laughs> All right. What's next, Steve? 
Whoa. Send us mail, guys. The address is still up there. Send us whatever you want. Well, not whatever, but please keep it legal and keep it safe. It kind of sounds like you just need to try it out. Uh, apparently, there's a, a few different options for what you could have put into it, so we don't know. But like some of the options are theremin and theremin two, or fuzz or rat, or it could be. You're telling uh, me that there, that might be the sequel to the theremin. Theremin two. Yeah, there's a bunch of different. Like, theremin will be back be. next time in uh, theremin apparently. two. So, yeah, we're just gonna have to. We're just gonna have to. Break it open. Is there anything more cocky in the history of cinema than Back to the Future at the end of their first movie being like, hey, stay tuned. There's going to be a sequel. Like in the credits. Like yeah, stay- there were a couple. Um, That's one, cocky. One was um, there was a movie. Oh, God. What movie was it? I, I want to say it was Hot Shots Part Two, but it wasn't Hot Shots Part Two. It was a movie that was like making fun of it and they called it like, or it was a movie I think that was included. Like it was it loaded. There was a movie called like loaded weapon. Sure. I think it was, came out as loaded weapon part one. And right. I, and it was, it stunk. Right. Right. This, so yeah, there is, but that was like there, a comedy. No, it was like, well, it was a comedy, but it would like had assumed that, Maybe it wasn't loaded weapon. Maybe it was something else. But there was some movie that like, right, right. Well, like was made like as famously if there was like a sequel. Like Fletch was supposed to be a series of movies and, mm. and things like that. There well, they finally mo- came out with another one. I know, I know. Uh, but that's that also, doesn't really like, count. Avatar. There's gonna be like they're finally coming out with Avatar two. At the current rate, Avatar. I think there's supposed to be five of them. At current rate, Avatar five will be coming out in like twenty sixty eight. I've been seeing the advertisements for the new Avatar. It's like they're selling a screensaver. Like, they haven't told you anything about the story other than, like, oh, there's water now. No, I don't understand it. There's not... There's, they don't... Is it? Is the plot really going to be that surprising that you can't give us even a taste of the plot to get us interested? Because, honestly, no one's interested. I'm not interested in watching, a, like, more hours of avatar action unless mm-hmm. you can compel me with the plot i'm an adult now you know like there's incredible graphics i mean you were in an all adult sorts when of the movies. first one came out yeah but i was a younger adult i was the adult that would go watch a screensaver and pay all money right. for it i want to talk about this a little bit more yeah not exactly that but i want to talk about that a little more but let's do a sponsor spot because i want to get it in under an hour okay Good luck. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> this uh, this first pedal sponsor of ours is Big Ear Pedals. They're back in business. Yeah, baby. Did I kill your headphones? Sorry. No, I did it. <laughs> Ugh, Again with the professionalism. I'm sorry we're being so professional this episode. Uh guys. If they're you, back in they're business. Back, they're they're building again. Yeah. Head on over to BigEarPedals.com. See what they have. They have some stuff in stock. They fired uh, up the soldering iron for the first time a week ago, and I bet it hasn't gotten cold since. Yep. So watch. Uh, they're totally go. like just eat. Write them. Just check go. with them. Just check go. with them. Ask them. Just go. Yeah. BigEarPedals.com. This episode is also brought to you by Chase Bliss. Uh, ChaseBliss.com. You know, Steve, <laughs> what happens when you buy a habit? <laughs> it's habit forming. There's an custom. Where I'm from, where if you buy a Chase Bliss habit, officially, you can call yourself sire. You are now a sire, and you can put it on your driver's license. You can put it on your birth certificate. Actually, any royal title that you want is yours for the taking. The moment you buy a Chase Bliss habit. I feel like none of those things are true. But head on over to Chase Bliss. None of those things are true. But what is true is that the Habit is a wild and wonderful and beautiful pedal. Go check out all the demos. Or don't. If you're, fr- listen, if you're afraid, if you know that watching a video of this pedal will cause you to lust for it, to deeply desire for it in an irresponsible way, Please, by all means, avoid all media, including this video. Turn off this video now. Avoid all media involving this pedal, for it will lead you down the path, down the signal path of wanting a habit. It'll be your new habit. Sorry. You want to do an ad? (sighs) 
I said I was going to talk about another thing. <laughs> What's that? I do want to do an ad, I said Steve. I was going to talk about another thing, but I'm, I'm going to save it for next I'm week. exhausted from holding myself up yeah, all day. I'm going to say that right now. Uh, what? All right, this is a Dutch amp. It's a vintage guitars, guitar Versterker. Vintage guitar Versterker Novanex Automatic 8. Oh, that sounds cool. Weg Wagons Plots Gibrek. It's 50 bucks. It's 50 euros. I included two photos of more current, more modern, not even current, but uh, later versions of the Nova Novanex amplifier. But man, this version of this, I want it just for furniture. For fifty bucks, this is probably eight inch speaker. Yeah, I you gotta you gotta buy it's, this. It's a it's a cheap you know like sixties or seventies oh, uh, solid no. state thing. It's missing something, huh? Well, it's, it looks like it's missing LED, and also it's I forget this is a uh, European. It's two wants two hundred and thirty. I tell you, I don't care. I want it for the furniture. Of I want to plug it in. It's beautiful. Look at the knobs on it. The knobs are something. The knobs are rad. They're colorful. They're different shapes based on their color. Look at the dial aspect of it. Like the the numbers on it. This I want this. I want like a Benson or a Milkman to reissue this design. <laughs> like this is this is stunningly beautiful. Yeah. This is a stunningly beautiful small amplifier, and I know it's just some sort of you know like it's cheap solid like cheap state solid state, state practice amp sort of thing. But this is stunning to look at, and I love looking at it. I w- like I would get this, and I would turn it into a like a Bluetooth speaker or something like that, or I'd turn it into like a speaker like a subwoofer for my. Uh, for my phonograph. Did we say that this ad was sent by Mark DeBrun? Uh We just did. Well, yeah. you just did. And I, I, I do, um, you know, this is a small, it, I probably, again, it probably doesn't sound good. This amp is just from a particular uh, market niche that I think, like, this is really cool. It's super cool. And it's missing an LED and then a switch or something like that. Yeah. But the aesthetic of this, like, $50, no sweat, I'd buy this if it was local. I actually got on eBay and I was looking around to see if I could find any other examples of this, and I could not. Mm. Um, and then I was I showed it to Lauren, my wife, my wife, and she got on the internet. She's like, that does look cool. She was probably like hoping she could find it somewhere and give it to me for Christmas or something like that. But she found all this information about it. I had no idea it was solid state. I had my suspicions, but then she found articles about it telling me that it was solid state and things like that. And, and now that, you know it sucks. And it's solid state blows. She found an article saying like, oh, none of these ever sounded very good. They're very flat sounding amplifiers. There's nothing special about the circuit, but people collect them for kind of the aesthetic and the novelty mm-hmm. of the collection yeah, and stuff like it. that. Like even these later versions here that still have the colored knobs, but they're more simple versions of that. Those th- are rad looking I think looking the very amps. last one looks cool. The one the one before yeah. that, this one looks too much like a crate amp. It does get crazy with the, the corner things here. But man, that first one, this is a company that's been going downhill <laughs> aesthetically since the beginning. And they like, <laughs> you, you look at the newer versions of they it. They should have like, hired a graphic designer. When I searched for them, I found uh, a video of Andy uh, interviewing the current uh, uh, owner. They still exist? Apparently the brand still exists. Uh, Weird. In back in 2018 at Music wow. Mensa, yeah. So apparently still in production under this name, but the, their amps look v- completely modern now. They don't look like they don't look special like this because no. it's so special. Nova next. If you get wind of this episode because we're talking about you, make this. I will demo it for free. Make a reissue of this. I will Dang. demo it for free. Well, it needs to run on US power. Well, yeah, we can figure that part out. It'll be fine. It'll be fine. I'll get, I'll, I'll get a 60 to 50 cycle hum converter. All right. <laughs> uh, this ad was sent by Matt Good. Not to be confused with his... And by the end, we'll decide if he's Matt Great. Not to be confused with his alter uh, alter ego, Matt Bad. Uh, this is electric guitar, 30 pounds, white guitar with electrical pickup. Oh, 30 pounds is the price. Yeah. <laughs> like, is there it's something in, about this I don't know? This is in Nani in England. Got a bunch of European ads here. This is another wild acoustic to electric conversion guitar. Mm-hmm. I just, I don't remember what my thoughts were when I got, grabbed these screen grabs, but look at it. I think for 30 bucks, you got to 
or 30 squid, you got to buy this. Thir- yeah, 30 pounds. Worst like, case scenario, you got a cheap ass. I don't think it's going to get I don't think it's going to get lighter than that, guys. It's got a yeah, it's got an off-market Bixby on it. It's got a pickup in it that looks pretty no, cool. That's a garbage pickup. But it looks cool. Sure. It's a war man. Yeah. It's a hot rail and a single together as one humbucker. I'm assuming that means it's hyper versatile and you can split it in all sorts of creative ways. You know, I say that this is definitely worth 30 squid, but um, actually it might not. <laughs> it probably, no, it's not. No, this is probably worth nothing. Yeah. This, you know, the, it, that's the reality of it. But I mean, that's fun money, right? That's dinner. Be. That's dinner in a movie or a crazy guitar. Bro, it's dinner in a movie for one person. Yeah. Not even that. Yeah. It's dinner. It's dinner for one. It's a nice dinner for one person. It's fast food and a movie for one person. <laughs> uh, and it's one movie or, ticket and a third of a popcorn. Listen, you could go to the dollar store. 30 times, or you can go get this guitar. Depending on the tax rate in the city you live in. Right. Well, yeah, I guess you're not going to pay taxes on this. So like, you know, 23, 24 times or something like that. (laughs) But you go to the dollar store 24 times and you're not going to once walk away with an acoustic guitar that is white with binding and has a double cream humbucker in the sound hole and a knockoff big speed behind the bridge. It's a one-of-a-kind piece, guys, and that's all I've got to say about it. All right, tell us about the song, Steve. We're uh, over an hour. I'm sorry, this, Steve. No, no, I'm sorry. no, 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 it's fine. I just wanted to get the sponsors in before. Okay, okay. Then uh, this says, a song for the podcast. This was sent to us by, oh, no. Ugh. I clicked on a notification. That's the weirdest name Ugh. I've ever heard. All right, this was sent by Kate Ruckus, who says, hey, guys, I've been watching the channel or while I think we have a lot of similarities in the kind of music we enjoy. I'm in a band from Cambridge, Ontario called the Accidentals. We're a punk band who draws influences from ska, psychobilly, and surf. The song attached is called Gunny Sack Blues, and I'll link you to our Spotify and Bandcamp as well. Thanks. Uh, love the podcast. Thanks for all the awesome videos. I'd see that live. Oh, yeah. Are you kidding? I'd go to that show for sure. Yeah. All right. Bye, everyone. Stay grounded.